it's a big plant. <laughs> Hello everybody, what's up? It's Fern. Welcome back to another planting video. I'm very excited to be filming today because we are going to be talking about some of my all-time favorite plants. We are going to be going through my entire philodendron collection. Now, I am a philodendron lover through and through. It was probably the first genus that got me really interested in collecting plants because I just fell in love with all of the different types of leaves, big heart-shaped leaves, velvety leaves. They're also the first plants that really got me inspired to try growing my plants climbing because they can size up so much. They're just very impressive, very rewarding to grow, and if you give them the right conditions, most of them are quite easy to grow as well and tolerant of just living in regular room conditions. In fact, almost all, all except for one, and that one, or no, two, and those ones don't even technically need to be in the cabinet, but almost all of the plants that I'm gonna be showing you today are just growing in regular household conditions. And the ones, yeah, the ones that are in the cabinet, cabinet don't even need to be in there. So yeah, that's something that I love about them is that they don't demand these hyper-specific conditions. So, yeah, this is going to be a ranked video. Once again, I love doing that whenever I share my um, different collection videos. I think that I only have 19 plants, which is a significant decrease from last year. And I feel like philodendron are what probably what I downsized most on over the past year, just because they do take up a lot of room. So I had to rehome some of my largest ones, like my Billetier, my um, Jungle Boogie, the ones that have just like a really big wingspan, I ended up giving away. Um, so that is the one thing that kind of stops me from collecting too many philodendron now. I feel like I'm much more likely to um, if I'm gonna get new plants, choose something like Hoya that I can kind of keep in a smaller space for a longer time. Um, philodendrons either need like a larger floor space or a moss pole or something like that. So it is a little bit more of an undertaking to bring more of those into my collection. I also do have a few that are currently in propagation. So my philodendron El Choco Red is in a prop box. I'm also going to be chopping up my philodendron Mame and Gloriosum, so those are not going to be seen in this video either. I might have another one or two in my prop box as well, but maybe it's just the El Choco right now. The nice thing about them is that they are really easy to propagate for the most part. All right, I'm going to start at my least favorite, and then we're going to work our way up to my most favorite, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Okay, coming in at number 19 is of course one that is kind of hard to show you because it's more of a wispy one. This is my philodendron polypodioides, and this is ranked in last place, not because I don't like it, but just because it's very new to my collection and I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet. I will say that this has had an incredibly easy transition into my home. I got this as a cutting in, I think June. So just a few months ago, I potted it into a self watering pot in my DIY pond mix. I have a whole video where I repotted this plant and some others in the same kind of setup if you're interested, but this immediately started growing after I potted it. So I was actually, it was even growing before that, like when I just had it in water for a while to kind of establish some more roots. And it was even growing then when it was like in propagation essentially. So it is making an impression on me that it's a super vigorous and hardy plant. So I'm really curious to continue to grow it. I actually, that's another plant that I rehomed because it got so big. My philodendron tortum is no longer with us. Um, we gave that away to some friends, which is kind of sad because I love that plant and I grew it to be quite big and tall, but um, I ended up getting this plant. So I let the tortum go because they kind of have a similar vibe and I was just curious to try out something new and see how I did with it. I really like that the polypodioides, oh dear, is the sun gonna be a problem? Might have to move the camera closer, see if that's better. But I really love that the polypodioides has this, um, like long tail on the leaves. I think that it has a really elegant leaf shape. That's definitely one of my favorite features of it. 
Love the dark green. It's, you know, the same kind of color that the philodendron tortum was. But yeah, I really love the leaf shape on this one. I think that that is just so stunning. And yeah, it almost gives like a palm frond kind of vibe. This is super, super different than anything else in my collection. I do not have any philodendron or anything else that is similar to this at all, really. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, like I said, it's just been so easy going. This currently lives in an east facing window and I kind of just don't do a lot for it if I'm being completely honest. I stuck it there because I didn't know where to put it. So there was space on that windowsill. I just stuck it there and it's been doing awesome. So yeah, I'm really, really happy about that. Oh, this is cool, this shape that it's getting. Okay, so if you look at a younger, like what the um, more juvenile leaves look like at the top here, it's like smooth, but then the newest leaf has this like kind of flared, reminds me of like a dragon or something. I don't know, it looks really cool. Um, so, wow, the leaf shape is already changing. That's so interesting. What a cool plant. One that I'm definitely excited to continue to grow out. Okay, coming in at number 18 is a philodendron that I have definitely been neglecting. It lives on the east facing window beside the polypodioides that we just saw, but I don't know what it is. I just, this is the problem when plants are more hardy, I often tend to just neglect them a little bit. And for a while I wasn't decided if I wanted to keep this plant or not. This is the philodendron Camposportuanum. I really wasn't decided. I was undecided if I wanted to keep it because I have other climbing like velvety leaf philodendrons, but I do find the Campo to be super unique. So I think I am going to keep it and I need to start putting some more effort into growing it because this moss pole is crispy. And as you can see, it's like not even really rooted onto here. So I should stick a cup in here and then start actually taking care of this, maybe move it out of the office so I see it more. But yeah, this is just a very easy to grow philodendron. If you're looking for something velvety, that is like a very tough plant, easy to propagate, can handle a lot of neglect. This is a great one. So I'll show you what mine's looking like, but it's not a great representation of the plant. It has these velvety kind of leaves, which when juvenile looks similar to something like a micans, but once it matures, it gets this really like fish-like shape with elongated lobes. So it's a really cool one and just gets like such a different shape in comparison to other um, philodendron or like velvety philodendrons, I guess, at least the ones that I have in my collection. So for that reason, I think I'm gonna keep it and continue to grow it out. I do really love it. And yeah, it's just so, incredibly forgiving and easy to grow. So yeah, hopefully I will have a better example of this plant to show you within the next few months. It does grow very quickly as well, like constantly working on a new leaf. So I feel like if I, you know, start taking care of this, get on top of it, it will reward me very quickly. So yeah, we'll see what ends up happening with this one. I am very excited for its future, but for now it just looks, you know, not like anything super special. Okay, I kind of feel like the polypodioides did not deserve to be at number 19 because I have, you know, <laughs> worse looking plants that I'm ranking higher than her, but I only put it there because, I don't know, she's just so new to my collection. However, I do have another plant that's just as new that I ranked higher, so maybe she didn't deserve that spot. But anyways, we're just gonna carry on. So coming in the number 17 spot is my philodendron serpents. Now this, is a philodendron that I am seemingly in constant battle with, but I just continue to keep trying to grow it well because I really want a nice healthy one. I think that they're so cool and so stunning. I love obviously the um, fuzzy petioles. This is definitely the plant with the fuzziest petioles in my collection. And um, I do love the leaves as well. The leaves on mine right now, not looking great, okay? It's unfortunate because I did have this plant finally growing nicely, like I was getting all of these nice leaves, she was starting to climb, and then spider mites happened. She got very infested with spider mites and now her leaves look like this. That is spider mite damage, which is so sad. Um, 
it's crazy how much it shows up on this plant because some of my other plants that had spider mites just as bad if not worse like for example my alocasia fry deck which lives right beside this one they both had spider mites the alocasia probably had them even worse and i like cannot spot any damage on that plant so i don't know but the damage really showed up on this philodendron sadly anyways i've been treating it with the new um, like DIY pest spray that I've been doing. If you watched my last plant chores video, I talk about it in that video and I mix up a batch and start spraying my plants and everything. But I've started treating it with that. So I don't see any more spider mites, but I'm obviously just gonna have to keep treating to make sure that they're gone. We do have a new leaf coming. So I'm not sure if that's gonna come out damaged or not, but it is a decent size and you know, even though I'm dealing with this spider mite damage and it doesn't look the prettiest right now, I still am really happy with this plant. Like, I feel like we're in a pretty good place together because I feel like the roots are healthy. She's rooted into the moss pole. She's climbing, she's sizing up. So I feel like I just have to get on top of this pest issue and then I'm gonna have some really nice growth. So yeah, at least that's my positive mindset on it. She lives on my Vitstro shelf in the middle part that's under my um, Rousseau pendant lights and seems to really love it since the leaves have been sizing up and everything. So yeah, I really do love this plant and I'm hoping that I will finally be able to crack the code and have a nice one. Also, if you see any white residue, what is that? Do you see that speck right there? I literally thought that that was thrips. I don't know what that is. I think it's too small and whatever it is, it's not alive. It, I think it's just a speck of something. No, this literally looks like it was a bug. Well, I'll find out soon because I just moved this out into the main part of my collection. So I'm sure it would spread like wildfire. If I get thrips right now, I'll be making a swift exit from this hobby because what the heck, I'm just getting a handle on my pests I've been dealing with over the summer, you guys. Okay, so this, now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, this literally looks sus. This literally looks sus. Oh my God, look at this damage. That literally looks like thrips damage. <sighs> if you watch my Wally Grow video, that's where this came from. This is a variegated Hartley philodendron. And I just, those plants were completely neglected and dead and I just got rid of them all. And I was saying, I was like, I'm so surprised that these don't have pests since they're like so neglected and just look so awful, but. And they've been like isolated in my bedroom where there's not really other plants this whole time. But then I had taken them all out here and I was like cutting them up, getting rid of them. Oh, there's also a mealybug, fun. Okay, well, I will be treating this promptly. Stay tuned to find out if I am going to have thrips or not. Oh my goodness. Okay, so number 16, my variegated Harley philodendron. I love her. This was the only plant that I kept from the Wally Grow. Um, very pretty variegation. I love trailing philodendrons. That's another big difference from this year's plant collection versus last year. Last year I had my big beautiful trailing philodendron wall in my Wally Grow planters. And I loved those plants so much. I recently let go of them. It's a whole big thing. You can go watch the video if you want to, but um, probably my favorite one from that, from my trailing philodendrons was the lemon lime. Um, so I'll probably add that back into my collection eventually, but I do really like this one. So I kept it because they're harder to find and yeah, just very easy going, fast growing and obviously just beautiful variegation. So yeah, anyways, I'm gonna go put her in the bathroom now. So a lot of y'all seem to also use the DIY pest treatment that I've started using, which is tea tree castile soap, peppermint castile soap, hydrogen peroxide and isopropyl alcohol. Let me know if that also gets rid of thrips. I imagine it would, I think it 
would target all soft body pests, but leave a comment and let me know if you've used it to treat thrips because now I feel like I need to be like covering all my bases here. Okay, let's get back into a positive mindset. <laughs> this hobby tests me sometimes. Okay, so next coming in at number 15 is one of my favorites right now. This is my stunning variegated micans. Now she's wet because I just, um, she had diatomaceous earth on her and I just kind of wanted to clean it off for this video so you could see her better, but there is still some on there. Um, if you see any white residue on any of the plants, that's what it was. I treated most of my collection with diatomaceous earth. Now I'm in the process of washing it off and doing the new pest treatment I was talking about. Anyways, this plant is literally stunning. Probably one of my like favorite variegated plants that I have in my whole collection. The unfortunate thing, this would honestly probably be in my top five if um, it didn't revert <laughs> like every single time I try to grow it. So I recently cut this up. You can see we do have a growth point activated there. So there's a fun little update. Um, but I'm waiting for to find out if the new gro growth is going to be variegated or if it's also going to be reverted. But there's just something about the variegation with the dark velvety leaves that I love so much. You can see the like pink on this one. Like I'm such a sucker for that. Same with the variegated philodendron melanochrysum. I think that that is so pretty, but considering I can't even grow the regular green melanochrysum. I think I'm gonna steer clear of that one. Although I have heard that people have better luck with the variegated one than the green one. Has anyone else heard that? Or do you have any experience? Let me know because it has the same kind of variegation and I really just love like this coloring. It's so gorgeous. So yeah, and she's so cute in her little pink pots. So yeah, my variegated philodendron micans. Okay, next coming in at number 14 is an oldie but a goodie. Now this is actually one of my all time favorite philodendrons. Like this used to be my number one favorite philodendron back when I had better specimens of it. But in the past couple of years, I've just had such a hard time growing this plant. Not in the sense that it, you know, is like finicky or won't grow out or whatever but just in the sense that it won't size up. Like it loves to just give me these juvenile kind of leaves. Again, I've just rinsed this off for the sake of the video, but um, yeah, I think it's finally maybe turning a corner because I'm getting some nice, decent leaves up here. I mean, it looks healthy. And this is one of the plants that I grow in the Ikea greenhouse cabinet, not because it needs to, like philodendron, silver sword, or hustatum definitely does not need to be grown in cabinet conditions, but I just was growing it in there in hopes to give it a boost and get it to really get started and start growing. Obviously needs a pole extension as well. Over time, I've definitely become a little disheartened with this one just because it has not been as easy to size up as it has for some of my other philodendrons, but I do love it so much. Like when I see a nice, like more mature, healthy plant of this, it is just like nothing can beat it. It just really does it for me. I find that it is just like the color of it is so magical. Like it truly is just like a whimsical looking plant with the bluey green toned leaves. This and rainbow hour when my sun catchers come in is just an unbeatable combo. So yeah, this will always be one of my top favorite philodendrons. It's just that I'm hoping to be able to grow this out um, a little bit better. We'll see how we go from here, but yeah, philodendron, silver sword. Okay, next coming in at number 13 is another variegated philodendron micans, and it is the halo variegated. So this is a really um, cool plant, and I didn't even like, I don't know, I feel like, this wasn't really on my wish list, but once I saw it in person, I kind of became obsessed with it. So yeah, I love this one so much. Like the colors are just insane on this one. Look at that. It's so cool. And the variegation is always a little bit different on every leaf. I always have people commenting whenever I show this, like on Instagram or something, um, people are always like, oh, I've never heard of that plant before. Like I didn't even know that that existed. So yeah. 
The Halo Mykins is a really, really cool form of the Mykins and I'm kind of obsessed with this, the whole setup in the tiger planter and everything. I just think that it's so stunning. It's definitely giving jungle vibes. Love the dark velvetyness of it. And yeah, I just think that it is so, so beautiful and it's been super fun to grow. This was gifted to me by Natasha, who's planted in platinum here on YouTube. Um, and yeah, I'm just so grateful for it because it is just such a stunning plant. I also love how like sharp the leaves are. They're very elongated and just so pretty. Like these two, yeah, I love her so, so much. Also easy to propagate. I cut, I got this as one vine and then I cut it all up and now I have this bushy plant. So yeah. This one is the other one that lives in my cabinet as well. Again, I don't think it needs to live in there, but I don't have any experience growing this outside of cabinet conditions, so I can't really speak to that. But it seems very easy, gro easy going and easy growing, I guess. But yeah, just such a stunning one. So yeah, number 13, Halo Mykins. Okay, so number 12, this is one that is fairly new to my collection. I got this at the same time as the Polypodioides and um, had it rooting in water for a while and then put it into my DIY pond in this clear self-watering pot. So it's new to my collection. I probably should have kept it at the end because when I do these rankings, I typically put plants that I haven't had for very long at the end just because I don't have, you know, a fully formed opinion about them yet. But this one, I had to put it here at number 12 because I'm just in love with it. This was a wishlist philodendron, probably my top wishlist philodendron for 2024. So I feel so lucky to have been able to get it through a trade and it's just so stunning. It already came to me with three leaves and then it put out, wait, which is the new one? It came to me with these three leaves and then put out this stunning leaf right here in my care, right? Yeah, that's the one. Super pretty. And this is probably one of the plants that I'm most excited to grow out. I put this on a pole immediately and I was actually really surprised uh, the other day because I was looking at it and I noticed it's already rooted into the pole and I didn't think it was going to root so quickly, but it did. Um, but my goal with this one is to get it to size up because these can get like massive leaves. And this is the only pendant kind of philodendron that I have in my collection. I love pendant anthurium. So of course I had to um, have that in philodendron form as well. So yeah. I am really, really stoked to grow this one out. She does sit in a cute cover pot as well. She has a pink cover pot. It's just super heavy. So I took her out a bit to show you, but beautiful plant. And I'm really excited to see how I can grow her. Okay, a lot of the plants in the next half of the video are going to be some of my larger philodendrons. So coming in at number 11, let me put the tray down actually. She'll probably be dripping on me, but I think I've got to put it down. Okay, here is my stunning philodendron, Red Anderson. So this is a variegated philodendron that's in the realm of the, you know, pink princess, white wizard, like that. It might even be, are those the parents of this? It's some combo like that, I think. But I wanted a philodendron that had, um, you know, kind of that style of variegation with pink and white. Um, and I decided to go with the Red Anderson because I just love all of the different tones that you get in the leaf. It's very cool toned. You get like a muted kind of sage green, you get pink, you get the dark green, you get white. So yeah, I really do love it. Obviously the variegation is different on every leaf. Some of them are more highly variegated than others, but overall, look at this one, that's so pretty. Overall, I've been super, super happy with this plant and how it's been growing. I've had it for, I think, just over a year now, and I actually have an entire video dedicated to this plant when I first got it, unboxing it, and then I think potting it up. So um, I can put that in the description if you're interested. But I decided to go for this one because it, I was just really happy with the genetics. Um, yeah. I think this is one that I would definitely hold out on finding like a good specimen of it if you're interested. Um, I'm really glad that I waited for one that I really liked. 
Oh yeah, look at this leaf. This one's like hiding. Oh wait, there's like no variegation. The back is variegated, but the front isn't. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. From my view, it like looks like it has nice variegation. Anyways, yeah, she's been growing like a beast. I now have one, two, three poles stacked and it's kind of crazy how big she's getting. Like, wow, I'm quite impressed with her. Yeah, love this one so much. I got her from North Shore Tropicals. Okay, so we are now entering my top 10 philodendron. It was hard to rank them like within the top 10. It was kind of hard to rank these all in general because I am really trying to curate my collection in a way where I love all, like they're all kind of my favorite plants, you know what I mean? So coming in here at number 10 is my stunning philodendron, splendid, gorgeous, velvety climbing philodendron. This is a hybrid of Milanochrysum and Viricosum. It gets beautiful traits from both parents. It's an incredibly easy, beginner friendly option for velvety philodendron. I highly, highly recommend this one. It grows quickly, it's super hardy. It will size up even if it's not on a pole. You can grow this on just, you know, like a wooden stake or something like that. And it will do um, great as well. So this, I think this was in my top three. Surely it was, surely it was in my top three last year. I love the Philodendron Splendid very much, but unfortunately I ended up having to cut it completely back to wet sticks actually last summer. So I've been growing it out from that, but I mean like this is pretty good growth from wet stick in less than a year. If I can find out what the like, when exactly I cut it, I'll put how long it's been on the screen. But you know, we're getting like nice, decent sized leaves again. So it's just, that's a testament to just how hardy of a plant this is. It's so pretty, especially the color of the new leaves, the like slightly red backs on them as well. It's just so, so stunning. I will always be a fan of the Splendid. Like she's just gorgeous. She's so gorgeous. I have, I think three vines growing up this pole and it really needs an extension. So I need to do that. I've lost my wire cutters. I guess the only reason this is at number 10 and not in my like top three or five this year is just because I feel like I'm still kind of in the process of growing it out. So once it starts to mature a little bit more, um, it will definitely be in like my top, top favorites again. But nonetheless, I still love it very much. And yeah, it's just like a staple in my collection at this point. I think that it's one that you can definitely buy. Um, where's the cover pot? I think that it's one that you can definitely buy small um, or even like, you know, if there's someone locally who you can get a wet stick or something from, that is totally fine to start this plant from just because it does grow so, so quickly. You don't have to shell out for a big plant to start with. Okay, so number nine is my Philodendron Florida Ghost. Now, if y'all have been on my channel before, you know that I grow my Philodendron Florida Ghost kind of while well, trailing, but now I guess it's kind of crawling because I have it pinned up on the wall. So I can't really take it down and bring it here to show you. So I'm just gonna insert some B-roll footage. This Florida Ghost I've had for years and years. I feel like Florida Ghost was one of the first like rare Philodendron that I got and I was absolutely in love with it. I still am. It is tried and true and will always remain in my collection. I feel like it is a plant that I just never deal with any issues with. It never has pests. I've grown it in all different types of lighting conditions. Yes, the variegation or sorry, the like ghost emergent leaves will be more prominent or less prominent just depending how much light you're giving it. But even growing mine in low light where it is now, it still gives me like decently ghosty leaves. So yeah, I feel like I have a really great specimen and I'm so happy with it. It's one that again, I'll always keep it in my collection. I did used to have multiple of them. Now I just have my like original one, but I do consider growing one out on a pole. Like I, I really want to, I just don't know where I'm gonna put another pole, but maybe one day I will take a cutting and, um, root it out and then grow one climbing because these can get big and you know the more mature florida leaf shape yeah they're just stunning plants highly recommend the florida ghost 
If you're not familiar with this plant, it's really cool because the new leaves emerge light and then they slowly turn a darker green. So if you have it under high light, you can get a new leaf that's like pretty much white and then it's supposed to turn more green over time. Sometimes they don't, which is an issue that can happen with this plant. You can have the new white leaves just end up browning off because they don't turn green. I've definitely had that happen before, but yeah. Overall, I love this philodendron. I think it's so unique and just such a classic for any collector. Okay, coming in at number eight is one of my literal favorites. I'm so obsessed with this plant. I feel like I don't get to admire it as, like I really need to move this down and find a better spot for it because right now it's mounted really high on my wall. And the way that this plant is, like the leaves kind of are like, you know, they jut out almost like horizontally. So I can't really appreciate them from below. Um, so I need to move this down to eye level because every time I take it down, I'm shook at her beauty. So this is my philodendron orange marmalade. This was my top wish list philodendron of 2023 and I was able to get it last year. So that was really cool. Now this is kind of similar in coloring to the to the philodendron painted lady, but this one can get a lot bigger and it has really orangey emergent leaves. So this plant is actually also called the philodendron autumn queen. So this is actually perfect for the season, but you can see why. Like she has this really autumnal coloring to her. Again, excuse the diatomaceous earth, I did try to wash it off, but obviously I didn't do a good job. So this is obviously the newest leaf. And then this is the like one that came out before that leaf. So it still has a brighter, look at that. Like it's so pretty. It still has a brighter um, kind of like yellowy and orangey. And then they do fade down to this more green. It's still kind of speckled, but it's more just green. Really just stunning variety of colors. And again, these can get massive, like huge leaves, which is part of the reason that I really wanted to grow this plant rather than the Painted Lady. I had the Philodendron Painted Lady for years and I do love it. I think that that's an amazing philodendron, but I just wanted something that could size up a little bit more. So this was the option that I went for. And yeah, I am just obsessed with it. Also doesn't get a ton of light does not get a ton of light, hardly any direct light at all. And she still is just growing like a beast. So yeah, really, really great one. Okay, next. Also, I'm sure you've noticed that a lot of my philodendron are climbing philodendron um, and I have them on moss poles. I do have a whole video on the moss poles that I use and how I maintain them and everything. So if you are looking for more information on that, on what I use and everything, then I'll link that video for you. But most of mine are on the Rousseau poles, which I'll have linked in the description as well. I'll try to link as many, you know, of the things that I mention and that are related um, down there for you. But yes, okay, so coming in, are we at number eight? I've lost track, but next we have my stunning philodendron, Jose Buono. This is actually another big wish list plant. Did I get, to, get this at the end? No, I think I got this in like February. So yeah, this is another really big wish list philodendron for me. Also one of my top, like the Patriciae and this one. And then is there any other ones that I've been wanting? I think mostly those ones. Honestly, I'm pretty freaking content with my philodendron collection. Anyways, philodendron Jose Bono. Um, I actually have two of them. My other one is right here but I'll just hold up one of them to show you. This is my, well, this one's potted now, but this was a one leaf cutting that I've been growing out. This one also came from Natasha. And then um, I got super lucky because I really wanted this plant um, and Natasha gifted me that one. And then Plant Haven Toronto <laughs> sent me this one. So I was like, okay, I am being blessed with philodendron Jose Buono. So now I have these two stunning plants. Um, this one has like so many, growth points coming out of it. So it's very dense. Um, I do also have it on the moss pole climbing and it's nicely rooted in there, which is very satisfying. This is such a cool philodendron because the new leaves emerge with um, like white creamish variegation. Um, so you can see the variegation is more prominent on some of the newer leaves. And then eventually 
uh, it fades down to more of a minty kind of color, kind of like a green on green variegation. So you can see some of the older leaves, what the variegation starts looking like. I'm noticing she's like kind of dusty and grimy. So I'm gonna need to throw her in the shower, give her a bit of a wash. But yeah, she just grows like crazy. I have a beautiful new leaf that's coming in right here. I can't wait to see that. Um, she was giving me like all variegated leaves for a while there. How am I gonna show this one? This one was all variegated, but then they hang on to them because they fade down to this minty color. They don't just turn white and then brown and crisp off. So it's a really great, and honestly, I think underrated philodendron. Like, and these can get big, like the leaves can get big. Mine is relatively small, but still stunning. And yeah, I'm just so excited about it. So excited to grow it out more, watch it get a little bit more mature. It really is just one of my favorite philodendron and I'm so glad that I have it in my collection now. I really like the way the leaves lay. It's so like, I don't know, it's satisfying the way it is. It's like fluffy almost, so pretty. Okay, the Jose Bono was actually number seven. So we are on to number six, which is my stunning philodendron El Guapo, form formerly known as both SP Columbia and SP Silver. Um, SP Silver is the name that is still kind of like in my brain, but I, it is technically El Guapo now. Um, so I used to have, oh my goodness, I miss when this plant was big. I used to have a really large plant of this. Um, and then sometime last winter, I think, um, it got attacked by thrips. I was having trouble with thrips. This is probably the same thrip outbreak where I had to cut back the philodendron splendid but I was dealing with that and I just could not get rid of them on this plant, like they were just obsessed with it. So I ended up completely cutting it back to wet stick and I have been growing it back from, from that <laughs> since then. So yeah, I currently have this two leaf plant. Now this is um, a crawler, but I am trying to grow mine climbing because I was growing my other one climbing as well and it did actually climb, which was really cool. I had it on a DIY pole, and now I'm gonna try it on the Russo closed back pole. However, the pole, like the way the plant is growing is kind of, it's not facing the pole. So I'm wondering if I need to up, like kind of re do, do a mini repot and just kind of twist it around so that it's facing the pole so that I can actually encourage it to climb. I think I might do that and just try to be, um, try to not be invasive while I do it because I obviously don't want to disturb the plant. But yeah, I just love this one. Again, it has that like blue green, almost like silvery tone to it. That combined with the pillowiness of the leaves is what really drew me in. I got this plant a couple years ago now. And as soon as I saw it, it was like one of those plants that I was just like, I, I need to have it like immediately add to wish list. I bought it as soon as I could pre-order it and I do not regret it. These are very cheap and accessible now, like most places you can get a cutting for a really affordable price. So that's awesome. But yeah, it will always be a favorite of mine. I just think it's so, so stunning and very easy going. Like the thrip issue was unfortunate, but besides that, I've had like zero problems with this plant. And again, I just grow it in ambient. Oh, actually, I will mention this plant actually seems to prefer lower light. If you give it too much light, it will bleach. So I grow this, like it doesn't get a ton of direct light. It gets just like indirect, like low to medium light, I would say, and it's really happy with that. So just keep that in mind. Okay, we are officially entering my top five philodendron in my collection. And coming in at number five is my stunning philodendron viricosum. This is probably the philodendron that I have been putting the most effort into growing this year. I baby this thing like, my, the rest of my plants might be thirsty on whatever given day, but this gal, no, no. Her pole is topped up. Her soil is moist. She's getting top tier care around here. And that's because I'm so dedicated to trying to get this plant to size up. I want a mature one. This is probably the biggest viricosum I've grown before. I've probably, this plant I've had for literally like four years, but I've never had a big one before because because I always just end up cutting them up. Like something will happen, pests will happen, or I just won't be keeping up with the maintenance enough. Um, 
So I just always end up cutting it back and then restarting it. But this time I was like, no, I am very committed to keeping up with um, the pole, keeping up with just maintaining the plant. So I've been trying my best at that. And I think that I have done a pretty darn good job. This is just one of the prettiest philodendron of all time, in my opinion, or prettiest plants of all time. You have the stunning coloration. You have a velvety finish and then you have the beautiful um red colored backs oh and the fuzzy petiole like literally this plant just has so many um amazing amazing tr amazing traits it is so unique and yeah i really want a big one not the easiest to grow in my experience and it's also not good at climbing. <laughs> like it needs to climb, but it's not good at just naturally adhering to the pole. So I do try my very best to not let this get too dry. Um, and I also use these greening pins to, um, or you can use, well, I don't know if a dragonfly clip would work at this point since the vine is getting thicker, but something Velcro, like anything to keep this close like i can move this one up now it gets such long internodes that's something else about this plant it's like insane and every time i pin it just like keeps growing so i always have to move these up so i literally have to always have it pinned close to the pole for it to root in or else it will just be like flying off of the pole so it is a lot of work but i think it's worth it because it's just so so pretty i grew this in i grow this in room conditions obviously it's way too big to put anywhere else um, sits in front of my south facing window so it gets quite a lot of light. Uh, I'm hoping she's gonna have a good winter because I think that these prefer cooler temperatures rather than the heat but yeah I am super super happy with how this plant has been doing this year. This is definitely my best varicosum over all the years I've been growing varicosum out. I mean, it's the same plant. And the cool thing about these two is that there's so many different varieties. I would love, like if I had the space, I would love to get a couple of the other like different, there's like Amazon Sunset and there's so many forms of this. Um, I don't know what this one is, probably just the like most common one, but yeah, love Viracosum so much. Coming in at number four is actually a hybrid of the Viracosum. This is Philodendron Majestic, and it's a hybrid of Philodendron Viracosum and Philodendron Soderoi, which is where it gets its silvery um, splashes from. This is a plant that looks best in the sun. Like that's when it really just shimmers and shines. And oh, it's just like, yeah, it's such a beautiful plant. I'm obsessed with the Majestic. If you watched my Philodendron collection from last year, you would have seen this in its in a more impressive size. Um, I, why did I, okay, so I had this, this grew huge. I had like four pole extensions and it just became unmanageable. So I decided to start it over and I kind of regretted doing that because this took an incredibly long time to get reestablished and I was not expecting that. But now I know that, that maybe like propagation is not the easiest with this plant, not even propagation, like the cuttings rooted well, I mean, they did take a while to root, so maybe not the easiest. I guess I can say that. My experience, at least, was not the easiest. Um, and then it took a very long time to actually push out new growth once I potted up the cuttings. But now that she is established, <laughs> she's growing, she's happy, and she's starting to look beautiful again. So I am so excited to have her back in my collection as she should be. This is just, yeah, one of my top philodendrons. I think that it is such an, an incredible hybrid. I love philodendron hybrids in general, but yeah, this one is just so gorgeous. And there's something about the way the new leaves look before they unfurl. I'll try to pop a photo on the screen, but they look like, I don't know, so like 3D or something. They just look crazy. And that's one of my favorite things. Like when this is pushing a new leaf before it unfurls, it just looks so cool. Um, but yeah, this is just such a beautiful plant. It's a great, easy going plant once she's, you know, established and growing. So if you have a small one of these or a cutting and it's taking a long time, just be patient because once it does get going, it will not disappoint. I'm so happy that she's making her comeback. Okay, coming in at number three, this one might surprise some of you because I feel like I don't talk about this plant uh, like in 
proportion to how much I love it. I mean, I've said before that this is probably my favorite velvety philodendron because it's just so incredibly dark and I love the shape of it. But this is my stunning, I'm trying to find where the like lighting is the best for her. This is my stunning philodendron gigas. And this is another one that I actually restarted this year. I feel like my philodendron collection went through a bit of a rough patch where I just had to restart a whole bunch of them. And now we're getting to the point where they are growing out again and um, starting to look really stunning. So yeah, this is probably the darkest philodendron in my collection. And the emergent, like the new leaves have a beautiful, this looks like it has some spider mite damage. Um, many of my plants are in recovery from spider mites right now. But anyways, the new leaves have a really, really beautiful orangey red kind of look. And then once they harden off, they almost have like a blue tone to them. Like they're so dark, it's almost like a blue green. This is one of the leaves that I propped from. So this would have been like a more mature leaf on the old pole and then I propagated from it, but it's still looking stunning. Like it's still just so dark and yeah, I love this one so much. I've never really grown it to be very mature. These can get big. You mostly see them when they're kind of in this type of size um, or maybe a little bit bigger, but um, they can get big and mature. So I'm excited to see how I can grow this one out but this is probably like the biggest kind of leaves that I've gotten on this one in the past. But yeah, I just, I love it so much. Like it's very easy going as well in my experience. So if you have been wanting another velvet leaf phil philodendron, that's a little bit different than, you know, the like Milano hybrids that we see. Um, I definitely recommend checking out the Gigas. I think it's a great option. And yeah, I love the unique, leaf shape it's almost more of like a rounded like a teardrop shape i think it's so stunning and it lays very flat like the way that it flows i just can't say enough good things i'm obviously obsessed with the way this one looks almost at the top of her pole as well so i'm gonna be able to extend this soon which is very exciting so yeah hopefully she just continues to grow well for me okay coming in at number two is my variegated philodendron domesticum and this one i put at number two because it has brought me so much joy to grow this year like it has just been such a journey so i actually got this um, as a small plant um, as an import in december so i wasn't really sure how it was gonna do but it immediately started growing for me. Like it was the best plant out of that batch. It just like boom, 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 immediately started growing. And I was like, wow, like this, that's pretty cool. Um, so I had a really great start with it. And then it did this weird thing um, around this, wait, where did it first do it? I guess pretty young, like down here it started giving me, some of y'all have probably heard this a million times because I've talked about it so much on my channel, but it started giving me these conjoined leaves. And I know that plants can do that, but I had never really had it to this extent. So these are completely separate leaves, but they are sharing a petiole. Like they're just fused at the petiole. If you can see that one petiole, two separate leaves. So I thought that that was super cool and interesting. And it kept doing that for a few leaf sets. And I was like, this is so crazy. Um, where's another one? Oh yeah, there was this like fused one over here. Like, oh, it's hard to show. It was just giving me the these super weird like twin leaf kind of situations. Um, so that was really interesting to witness. And then it gave me, so from the same like growth point, it gave me two completely completely separate leaves from like the same point in the plant. So separate petioles, separate leaf. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then, so it's like gradually like separated because after that it turned into two separate vines. So now I have two completely like separate vines growing up this pole that all stemmed from like the weird twin leaf situation that was happening. Um, and one of them has pretty much reverted this vine on this side closest to me is pretty much reverted. And then the other one is like super highly variegated. 
a little bit too variegated in fact um i'm hoping that it will balance out a little bit like this one is the newest variegated leaf and that's actually quite nice it's not too heavy on the variegation because you can see i ha i do lose some of the highly variegated like this one i'm gonna lose because it's just too variegated but yeah it's just been such an interesting plant to grow and really fast growing like it's always working on a new leaf usually gives me two at once oh yeah it is so it's putting out this is going to be the variegated one and this is going to be the green one so it's just so fun to watch grow it's totally full of roots in the back of the pole it loves to climb very very fast growing very easy to grow and yeah i'm just i was honestly just taken aback with the tenacity of this plant like it is just it cannot be stopped. I now am growing this mounted on the wall, so it's not getting super high light, but I'm gonna see how it does up there. Might end up moving it again. It's just getting hard to find spots for all of my large climbing plants. I do have a lot of climbing plants in my collection, not only philodendron, but I also have a lot of epipremnum climbing and um, monstera. As you can see, I have my escaletto behind me here, so. I do have quite a lot of moss poles going on, but um, yeah, that is the Philodendron Domesticum variegated. <laughs> and I have a bit of an unexpected number one this year um, because this is a plant that I've always, I mean, I did kind of struggle with it in the past and I've always kind of liked it, but preferred other similar Philodendron, but I just cannot deny the crazy, growth of this plant over this year um i cannot deny that this is probably my most impressive philodendron this is my philodendron glorious which is a hybrid of the gloriosum and the melanochrysum beautiful dark velvety leaves um and yeah mine is just on turbo mode it's growing like crazy giving me huge leaves so this one is like pretty much at my height and look at how big it is. If I go beside it, I don't wanna be behind it, but if I go beside it, like it's a big plant. <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with her. Obviously I'm a sucker for velvety heart-shaped leaves just like everybody else. Um, the only thing that I struggle with and that I think a lot of people struggle with with the Glorious is the extra floral nectaries and like i said i have been dealing with a spider mite outbreak recently that i've gotten more on top of but there's still you know like past damage and stuff from that in some of my collection um when something like when pests are present that can encourage the plant to produce even more extra floral nectaries so i have been seeing um more recently but you just have to shower the plant off um like this for Gloriosum, or sorry, for Glorious, I really do think that it's a plant that should be showered regularly because it does just seem to like go crazy with the extra floral nectaries. But yeah, hard to show the whole thing on screen, but just believe me, she is huge and she is stunning. <laughs> I love her so much. I kind of can't believe, I mean, I know other people grow more impressive plants than this, but I, can, I kind of can't believe that I've grown this, um, especially here in Canada on Vancouver Island where we don't even get a lot of light or anything. I do have this just in natural light right now, but I'm hoping to install a grow light so that this can have some supplemental light. Obviously, trying to maintain these really large leaves does require um, high light and good feeding so consistent uh, fertilizer and showers in the case of this one but yeah that's my number one plant i was not expecting for this to be my number one this year but yeah she has just she has gone crazy <laughs> oh my goodness so that brings me to the end of the video my camera has already overheated twice and now it's going to overheat again so i'm going to wrap it up Thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite was from my collection or let me know what your favorite is in your collection. 
is there a philodendron that I should put on my wish list? Let me know because like I said, I currently like I don't think I have any philodendron on my wish list right now. And I always love, even if I'm not going to actually purchase it, I love just looking at them. So let me know if there's any that I should look up. I know there's been some cool hybrids and stuff coming out lately, but I feel like I'm not very up to date. Really hope that you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one. Bye.